came up with this plan of travelling all the way to Slovakia in about a week. Very, very strong wind started blowing and the next thing the rain started pouring down. We were in the back and the camper was just blowing side to side, torrential rain. We were going to come out and tow the van away to the nearest garage. Everything had been against us at every point and by this point I was just done. Well, this isn't the video that we were hoping to make. Uh, we wanted to make a van life series about our European road trip, um, but things didn't quite go as we were hoping. So let's start from the beginning. Our friends, they bought a Volkswagen T5 camper uh, in December last year. Uh, we always loved the idea of a camper and our friends, they wanted to be able to drive to Slovakia. He's from Slovakia himself, another film. We came together with the idea that we could travel together. Yeah, so we came up with this plan of traveling from our home in Edinburgh all the way to Slovakia in about a week. Um, after which our friends were going to stay about a fortnight in Bratislava, the capital of Slovakia, with his family. And we were going to then take the camper van, explore a bit more of Slovakia, and then travel home with it back to Edinburgh. We set off on a Wednesday evening. We left about quarter to eight in the evening. So the swap driver's halfway, so other Phil did the first half, and then we stopped at Weatherby service station about 1 a.m. Um, by the way, Weatherby service station, really amazing toilets. Like, they had fresh roses in the toilets at 1 a.m. What do you know? So, in the ladies' toilet. In the ladies, yes. Okay kept going down um, toward Dover and we arrived about 6.45 a.m. We'd actually booked the ferry for 10 a.m. just to give ourselves a bit of leeway. You are supposed to check in at least one hour before, so that would have been you know, 9 a.m. But since we were so early, uh, after getting a McDonald's breakfast, we decided just to head down to the port and see if we could get onto the earlier ferry, which was 8.25, and they, they allowed us to do that. So we got onto the earlier ferry and we're over in Calais by 11.30 uh, France time, so we made good time. Yeah, so then after stocking up on a bit of shopping and uh, making ourselves some lunch, some nice French baguettes in the van, we decided to just keep going, uh, heading south as far as we could. Uh, and we had decided not to take the toll roads, but the van, Jonesy is the van's name by the way, he's 17 years old. Because he is a bit slower anyway, he only does maybe a maximum about 55 comfortably. It was actually okay to not take the, the faster toll roads and it was quite scenic going through some of the towns and then taking some of the country roads. France, um, it's quite good for wild camping. They actually have uh, airs, so these are places that you can stay for either free or fairly cheaply overnight with your camper. So we had checked on the park for night and we found one. So we made it down just uh, almost as far as Rennes um, in the Champagne region of France. Um, so we stopped in a little place called Corbeny, um, just north of Rennes. And it was a small park up, just um, three official spots, but which were actually full. But beyond that, there was some, um, well, quite a big grass area where uh, there was already another camper there. So we, we were comfortable to park there. Yeah, it was a nice place. It was by a fishing pond. We saw some locals bringing their children down to do some fishing. There was also a, a single public toilet at the end of the road. That wasn't the best condition. So here is the toilet at the end of the campsite. And it's, uh, it does flush, that's all I can say. But the next morning we decided to keep going. Hello. Room for one. <laughs> Hello. Good morning. The plan was to head for Alsace region. So another day of driving all the way uh, from Rennes down through the Alsace region. We started to see some more beautiful scenery when we got into the vineyard uh, country. And we got to the village of 
Aguisson. Um, and that's a beautiful little French village. Uh, there's actually a campsite right on the edge of the village. So because it was just so convenient for the village itself, we decided to stay there rather than uh, stay in a park for night that was outside of the village. And it was very cheap. It was only 25 euros per night. Um, it's called Le Trois Chateaux, The Three Castles. Um, and we hadn't booked, had we? No, we hadn't booked. We had decided to leave our itinerary completely flexible because we didn't know exactly how much mileage we were going to be able to cover each day uh, with the van being older and with traffic etc. So. But it was a nice spot and it was, you actually drive through the little town to get to the site so you already see how beautiful it is. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, within walking distance. When we, when we arrived, they actually had no spaces on the campsite, they were fully booked. But they do have a couple of emergency plots, so they managed to squeeze us in. So we had brought our tent along just, just to make it a bit more comfortable if we were staying on a campsite rather than the four of us sleeping in the van. Because the van does sleep four, you can have two in the mold out roof and then two on the pull out bed downstairs. So we had done that on the, the first night in, in the park up. So we had a lovely evening there. And then the next day, we wanted to just slow down a little bit. We really needed a bit of a rest, I think, especially uh, the two Phils who were doing the driving. So we spent the day in Egusang, walking around this beautiful little village, very traditional building. lunch. Um, I had a duck and foie gras salad and then we went to one of the wine houses, Wolf Burger, and did a tasting. Very nice, it was quite modern because out of all the ones we were looking at, I was trying to find ones online that were open and what they were like and one of the ones that we did look at first was really really small and we just went into the shop front just standing there trying to be wine. That was it. But I looked online and this place looked really modern. It reminded me a lot of the styling of many of the distilleries back home, that sort of modern, attractive, you know, welcoming. We decided we would stay a second night in uh, the campsite in Egusheim. Uh, so we headed back. The second night actually they, they had a plot available so we were able to move onto a proper plot and have a bit more space. For our second night, as we were sitting uh, after enjoying a nice meal and we had enjoyed some of the wine that we bought, uh, we were playing a game of Settlers of Catan, sitting under the awning of the camper. And out of nowhere, suddenly this wind came, just very, very strong wind started blowing. And the next thing, the rain started pouring down. So we very quickly managed to lift the table with the game on it into inside the van. From this point, we had had a couple of different ideas about the route we'd like to take. So I really wanted to go through Switzerland. Um, spend a couple of days in the Interlaken area and then head through Austria down to Slovenia to see Lake Vlad and Ljubljana and then head on for Slovakia either through Hungary or back up through Austria uh, whereas our friend Jodi she quite liked the idea of going to Switzerland but then going on through to Italy and then over to Slovenia that way and uh, her husband Phil he wanted to go through Bavaria and uh, Czech Republic down to Slovakia that way, which is part of the beauty of a camper van is having the freedom to decide or to change your itinerary uh, when needed. So when this uh, rainstorm started, we decided to check what the forecast was for the next couple of days and we realised that Switzerland was to have pretty bad weather, like heavy rain for a couple of days, um, which kind of spoiled all the plans that we had had for Switzerland like you can't really enjoy the mountains or the scenery when it's you know so overcast and the cloud is very low on the mountains and we decided to skip Switzerland part which I was very disappointed about I really wanted to go to 
so it's really nice. Um, but the weather uh, seemed to be looking a little bit better in Germany, so we decided the next morning we would head to Germany. We went to bed that night after making that decision, um, but then the wind was howling, like mad, and the rain just was lashing down. We were really worried about the tent. I heard a snap, and then suddenly I saw the porch leaning in. I thought, oh, is that hopefully it's just a peg or something? But one of the poles had actually snapped, which we could still use the tent after that, but yeah, quite a lot of disruption, and it really, we really struggled to get to sleep, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah, so, and also packing away a soggy tent in the morning when it was still raining is uh, is never fun. But anyway, so we headed across the border of France into Germany. Crossing the Rhine into Deutschland. This is my first time in Germany. Really? Yeah. Oh, no. Was okay, and then as soon as you get to Germany, it's just lovely roads, easy driving, good drivers, law abiding drivers. But it was just they did everything you're supposed to do. Nobody was often doing stupid things, overtaking, or you know, driving up your backside, all, all these things. Nothing very courteous drivers. I liked it, yeah. So we were making good time actually on the roads in Germany, um, although we were still driving through heavy rain, um, and our friend Phil wanted to go to see uh, Neuschwanstein Castle. Um, so we decided to head for that area and he had seen on park for night a car park near there which he thought would be suitable for us to stay overnight. Unfortunately when we got to uh, Neuschwanstein uh, it was still very heavy rain and we could hardly see the castle uh, through all the, the mist and the rain. But we did find a nice um, traditional brewery and restaurant, and we had a lovely uh, German meal there. And they had a view of the castle when you could actually see it rolling up. Yeah. Really we had the currywurst and fries. Mm -hmm. Big sausage. And I had uh, some dumplings, which were different uh, flavors. So one was spinach dumpling, one was beetroot, and the third one was called a pretzel dumpling. Delicious. Really delicious. So then we headed for the, the car park. It was just a car park with a walk leading down to Borgensee uh, Lake and there was a, a port -a loo which I didn't really fancy using it. It didn't look very clean. Um, but we got the, the, the awning out and put the roof up and we'd uh, just settled down. We were about to open a bottle of wine and start a game of Catan. But something just didn't feel right. Um, there were a couple of other campers in the park, in the car park, but I don't know. We just had a, a bad feeling about it, so we decided to do a little bit extra research and discovered that although wild camping is permitted in Germany, it is forbidden in certain areas, including na uh, national parks, uh, which we were in. Um, and then, looking at the reviews for that park for night, a couple of people had said that they had tried to camp there overnight but that there were regular police checks and that they had been fined 55 euros per person. Per person. Four of us would have been over a 200 euro fine had the police come along. So we were a little bit freaked out and panicked. So we decided to uh, try for the nearby campsite, which was right on the, the lakefront. I went to drive and then the next minute, Sharon realized the roof was still up. <laughs> we packed everything else away. But the roof was still up, and it just, it was, yeah, we I think we just got in hysterics after that. We were driving out with the car park, and I heard like I thought wind. the wood, I thought the window was open or something, and then I was like, oh my goodness, we haven't put the roof down. Um, but then we made it up to the campsite. But when we got to the campsite, they were fully booked. They suggested another one, which was just about three kilometers down the road, a much bigger one. Mm. So we headed there. It was called Banwald Sea Campsite. A huge. Uh, and very expensive for the four of us and the camper, non-electric pitch, was 72 euros for one night. So yeah, we were kind of stung a bit by that. Um, but I decided to go check out the toilet block and I was like, this better be the best darn toilet block 
for this race. And it actually was, it was a very, very nice toilet block. Mm. It had hair dryers, mm -hmm. it had really nice showers. It was very clean. You know, it had a lot of hot showers you wanted mm -hmm. with no limitation. What I liked was that it had cubicles for sinks only and other cubicles for showers, which I've seen quite a lot on the continent that we don't really have in the UK. Uh, but it means if you just want to like wash your face or brush your teeth, you're not using up a shower cubicle or, or doing it sort of in the public sinks where people are coming out from the toilet and you're, you feel like you're kind of in their way when they want to wash their hands. So yeah. Because the toilets were separate again. Mm -hmm. Very well set up. Yeah. So it rained again very heavily all night. So we didn't put our tent up. Um, there was no point. So again, the four of us just slept in the camper van that night. And uh, the next morning it did clear up for a little while. Uh, we had a walk down to the lake, uh, Balfansi, just to, to have a look there. Uh, you can walk down from the campsite, it's, it's literally right on the, on the water. Uh, and then we headed off without really seeing much of, um, of Bavaria, unfortunately. Um, the rain started again and uh, we decided to just keep driving um, to get to Austria because the forecast was looking a little bit better for Salzburg. And Salzburg was one of the places that I really wanted to see, uh, being a big Sound of Music fan. Um, I wanted to see the places where, where that was filmed. So again, another day of driving, we made it over to Salzburg by the early evening. This time we were a little bit better prepared, so we'd, we'd looked ahead on park for night. And we'd found a farm where you can park. They have four spots. Uh, they have a, a toilet, a very, very nice right. toilet actually inside a kind of little cabin cubicle thing. Um, and they have an outside shower, which Phil uh, and Phil, both Phil's, uh, decided to try. Yeah, we shared with the wall. Cold. Is it cold? because it had kind of hooks where you could put your towel up at the front to make that kind of a screen. But it was set up and angled in such a way that nobody parked up could see and the closest anybody is was on a road in the distance so unless they're driving around with a telescope, you're fine. And we were very fortunate because nobody else came along. It was We were the only ones um, out of the four plots that were available. Mm. And that place was, uh, for the four of us, 30 euros for the night, so 24 would be for basic camper van and two adults, and then it was three ad three euros extra per extra adult. Uh, so we ended up taking an Uber into Salzburg, and we had a walk around uh, Mirabel Palace Gardens. The palace itself was already closed, but we had a walk around the gardens. along the river. where Mozart was born. Mm. There's, a, there's a spa at the bottom of his house. That must have been convenient for him. Eh? <laughs> just funny because it was just darkness and nothing. He, was, he was dropping us at a crossroad mm -hmm. and we have to walk after a lane. But it turned out it wasn't the first time. Yeah, he said he dropped someone off there before. I really recommend that um, park up. Um, yeah. I'll put a link um, in the description for that. Uh, 
in the morning the, the farmer drove down um, to, to sing hello to us. Um, he didn't speak any English, we, we tried to converse a little bit in, in broken German. And he brought us some schnapps. They make their own schnapps and they also sell eggs. So we checked the forecast and um, it was to get very bad for Austria for the next couple of days. Again, the weather was catching up with us. So we looked and the only place where there was sunshine that was within a day's drive of us was Slovenia. Um, so we decided we would head that way. The drive from Salzburg to Slovenia, uh, we had the Vignette, but we'd also, in addition to that, some roads in Austria, you still have to be at home while you went the Vignette. But we decided that we would just try to get as quickly as we could to Slovenia. Uh, so it would have taken two hours 51 and the journey was going very well. We thought we'll be at Lake Bled in time to have lunch. Um, until we got to the border. Yep. I was looking at the sat nav on Google. It was telling me that there was a 20 minute delay. And then suddenly we hit this traffic right at, as Google said it would be there. But it wasn't a 20 minute delay. It was what? Two and a half? Almost three hours. Three hour delay. Because we were waiting to get through the tunnel that it turns out Slovenia are still building. <laughs> so we were going, there's two tunnels, one's not finished. It's the, the first one. So they let traffic through from Slovenia and then they stopped them. And then they let traffic through from Austria and then they stopped. It's madness. It's, how long is the tunnel? Like um, six miles, 11 kilometers or something like that. Oh. And you know, everyone was very frustrated and upset because it was such a hot day, such a lovely day that we wanted to get to Lake Bled and enjoy it there, but instead, yeah. we had to sit in traffic and people were suffering. The children were sitting there yeah. crying and old folks in their cars. So. We sat in a motorway car park. Um, everyone out of the car is just sitting each inside. Each time we stopped, it must have been what? At least 20 minutes of just sitting completely still. It was about um, four times we stopped. Yeah, um, so that kind of you know, was a real bummer for us that we were arriving at Lake Black basically about 4.30 in the afternoon. Uh, so we managed to have, I don't know, late lunch, early dinner on the shores of Lake Black and, and had a little walk. But um, we didn't have enough time to uh, do the things that I would have liked to do, which was have a swim in the lake, take a boat out to the island. We didn't get to do that. Lake Bled itself, the camper on there is very expensive, sometimes up to 90 euros a night. We drove south to Cranch. It was a, actually a guest house, a bed and breakfast, but she um, rents out the land so anyone can come and park their, their camper van overnight. This place was lovely. The hostess was very nice. I explained, you know, that we were heading for Slovakia and that we'd been chased by the rain through Europe um, and that we wanted to see Lake Bled and we hadn't had a chance yet. And she said, oh, it's fine, you'll stay a second night. You'll stay a second night. And we're like, yeah, we, we probably should, you know, just take a couple of nights and then we can properly see what we want to see rather than rushing everything and then trying to, to drive on again the next day. So that's what we did. We stayed the first night. The, Hostess makes coffee for the, the campers and puts it out outside the porch on a little stone table in the morning so you can go get your coffee. You can use the toilets inside her uh, guest house on the ground floor. She leaves the door open overnight so you can use the toilet anytime you need. Um, and in the morning we decided to drive up to Lake Bled uh, and have a, a, a bit of a, a longer time there. A proper look. Yeah. So we hired a boat, which was lovely. Um, 25 euros for a four person boat for an hour and we paddled out to the island. Um, yeah, we didn't have a lot of time on the island, unfortunately. Um, I wanted to do the, the legendary thing of getting Phil to carry me up the steps to see if our love is going to be eternal. This, the other version of that story is that if you want to get married in the church at the top of the steps, the groom has to be able to carry his bride all the way up the steps. Uh, no pressure. <laughs> Thing is, though, it wasn't that. It wasn't a lot of steps. Mm -hmm. really. After the, the the paddle boat out to the island and back, we had a dip in Lake Bled, which was lovely, so nice and refreshing. 
And then we found a very traditional restaurant um, where we were able to have a nice lunch. That was one of our favorite meals. Mm, very good that food. enjoyed so far. So. I had uh, gnocchi and uh, both our friends, they had like a, this kind of fried gnocchi with um, chicken and a mushroom sauce. It's delicious. You had lamb shank. I had lamb why did I forget that? I had lamb shank. It was a, literally I just like picked up the board and just ate that. It was amazing. Yeah, so that was a lovely restaurant right in, in the town of Bled itself. Uh, so then we drove the camper back to, to the campsite. We left, we'd set up our tent on the first night, so our tent was still sitting there. Um, and we decided to take the bus because the hostess had told us it wasn't a very long journey uh, to get into Ljubljana, the capital of uh, Slovenia. Um, it was two euros fifty per person each way, and it was about what forty-five minutes from there to get into Ljubljana bus Com station. Comfy bus though, because it's like a like a coach. A coach. We didn't have a, a lot a lot of time in Ljubljana, but we had a walk into the uh, historic centre of the town. We had a drink in a popular bar, and then we walked up to the castle. Um, you were able to go into the castle. We were surprised, we just went up and walked past the ticket office and then sort of looked at it and nobody was looking mm -hmm. and we just keep walking. I guess because it was already quite late in the yeah. evening. Um, it must have been after seven by then. So we had a, a quick look around the castle, uh, got some photos and then headed to get the bus back out to the campsite. Um, but that was another very hairy night in the town. We had a big thunderstorm and um, yeah, I was fearing for my life being in a tent in a thunderstorm. I was literally just lying there watching the lightning and then counting the seconds until the thunder to see how soon my death was. Um, but I had a good sleep. I don't know how you slept through that. You were snoring. Mm. I had my earphones to drown out you and the thunder and I still didn't sleep. Yeah, the thunder seemed to be keeping further away, thankfully. It never got very close. That was one of my worst nights in a town. And miraculously, the next morning, it cleared up just long enough to let us pack the tent away because I was dreading packing away a wet tent again. Um, so yeah, I was very thankful that it cleared up. And then as we were driving off, the heavens opened and it literally started raining. Uh, this was Thursday. It did not stop raining until Monday three countries later. It became a named storm, Storm Boris. So we decided we would head for Hungary. And in Hungary, there are quite a few campsites which have thermal spas attached to them. And we thought, well, we can't really do anything else. It's gonna be absolutely pouring with rain. Why don't we book a campsite where we have a thermal spa, we can just spend the day enjoying some warm water instead of being drenched by cold water. So we got into Hungary. Um, literally have no footage, no proof of having been in Hungary um, other than crossing the border. Slovenia, 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 Hungary. Slovenia, Slovenia, Hungary! Yeah, we arrived on the campsite, it was raining, we checked in, we set up our camper as close to the entrance to the spa as we could and we just went straight into the, the spa. And then just spent the rest of the time there until it closed. Stayed there till 6.30 p.m. Turned out they had water slides, so mm. me and Phil, oh, well, you and Jodie yeah, did we it as well. Shot but me and Phil place. just kept running on it. We were mm. like, look. Yeah, we had another night, the four of us in the camper. There was no way we were able to set the tent up in that weather. No. The next day, through heavy rain and flood warnings. And horrendous winds. It was so windy driving to Slovakia from yeah. uh, Hungary. So this was our friend Phil doing the driving now. Mm. And he, he said well. he was he had been really looking forward to driving into his home country uh, with his camper van. in his camper van, windows down, you know, waving mm. at the window. Um, but yeah, we were in the back, and the camper was just blowing yeah. side to side, torrential rain. We were very fortunate that we made it to Slovakia in one piece. Um, Through the storm, we made it to. Phil's sister and brother-in-law's house where we were staying and yeah that's when Storm Boris really became a major thing like 
literally it was all that was on the news all weekend. So we arrived in the Bratislava on the Friday and our initial plan had been to spend a day catching up, doing laundry, doing some shopping, reorganising the van. Jodie and Phil would take their stuff out of the van for the rest of their trip and we would take the van and we were planning to do a few days of exploring Slovakia but because of the storm there was no way that we could uh, continue our journey. The roads were all flooded. And our friends were a bit concerned and saying don't, don't risk the drive because you could get stuck, you could get anything could, you know, could happen. So. so we ended up spending three nights staying with Phil's family in Bratislava. Um, it wasn't a complete washout though, we had some nice times just playing games and being fed by Phil's sister. Made us some really nice food, made a, a traditional Slovak dish which was duck with red cabbage um, and this flatbread. Um, yeah, very nice dish. Um, we also went to Phil's parents' house for lunch. We went out and did a wine tasting on the second evening. A lot of the wine festivals had to be cancelled or at least severely um, restricted. Uh, we were actually in Slovakia two years ago in about the exact same time in mid-September and uh, we were able to go to a wine festival with um, all the stalls out on the streets and a stage set up with traditional dancing. So. It was kind of cozy though, like the first place we went to was really nice cozy, we mm -hmm. managed to get comfy seats yeah. and we found a really nice place with lots of different things. Yeah. We enjoyed it. We decided that since we'd had to pretty much cancel the Slovakia part of our itinerary. I booked a castle hotel called the Grand Viglas. We could at least still go to the castle and just enjoy our night there mm. and then the following day we would start our return journey back to Europe yeah. and Phil said to me don't worry we'll, we'll still make it to Switzerland we'll, we'll go to Switzerland on the way back so yeah. but our travels unfortunately were not over. At this point my emotional state was not great yeah, we, were, we weren't sure what to do. We didn't really know what to do. Yeah. 